All right, let's close out the week by talking about the big move today in Treasuries and how that sets up Jerome Powell, who we're going to hear from next week. Kathy Jones joins me, Chief of Fixed Income Strategist at the Schwab Center for Financial Research. Great to have you on a Friday, Kathy, on a week in which bonds kind of stole the show. What do you think? Yeah, I think the market's coming around to accepting that the Fed can't cut as much as it previously expected and that, you know, some of the policies that have been proposed uh, raise the risk of higher inflation and slower growth. So um, I think it's just been a gradual recognition that there, there's a need for more term premium in the bond market to compensate for all these uncertainties. When you uh, look at the uh, uh, driving force behind it, uh, uh, it looks like we bottomed out in the yield last Friday around employment. So how does that factor into the analysis? Yeah, the employment numbers are pretty decent. Um, and I don't think that that was a big market. It was sort of a relief, like, OK, it wasn't anything other than what we pretty much expected. Therefore, the market had a chance to rally. And then this week, I suppose what we're looking at is more focus on the Fed, more focus on going forward. And um, although we think we'll be get a pretty good PCE uh, number next week, um, it's really a situation now where the Fed doesn't have as much scope to cut rates after next week's meeting. And there's a, I say there's just a lot of things up in the air right now in terms of where policy goes and what to expect coming from that. It's interesting because the uh, short-term markets, uh, Fed funds, futures, uh, saying it's a done deal, Euro dollar saying it's a done deal. But uh, last time, those markets also were favoring 25. Uh, well, not last time, but the first time. Uh, they were favoring 25 and Powell went 50. So we know that he's like not a robot tied to these things. Uh, does the action on the long end of the curve suggest that maybe that number is not a true 97 percent? Well, there's always a possibility that the Fed moves into pause mode sooner rather than later. I think the consensus is that they'll do one more cut and then uh, go on pause and, and reassess. And it may be that there's enough members of the Fed who say, you know what, we, we could pause right now and just wait until January or later next year and, and see what happens. I, I, the only argue, the, the main argument against that, we were in that camp of, you know, why don't they just pause now? Uh, main argument against it is we just didn't get any signaling from the Fed, and they don't like to disappoint too much that way. So we got no signaling from the Fed that, hey, this meeting is a potential pause. It you know, could still happen, but it doesn't seem as likely. Okay. It's, uh, then to the conversation on the term premium, Kathy, uh, what is the uh, strongest evidence for that being the main force? Is it the just the range of possible outcomes? The auctions went pretty well. It seemed like the demand this week was pretty strong. Yeah, there is demand at the long end. So it's not that. I think the term premium, though, is still pretty low um, okay. relative to history. And you have a lot of these uncertainties. Uh, going forward that, you know, have to be digested and have to be discounted in the market. And I just don't think there's enough term premium right now for that to happen. It was one thing when we thought we were on a glide path lower. Now, if we're only bumping down maybe a little bit, ending at 4% in the Fed funds rate, well, that's a whole different picture than what we had back in September or October. So given that outlook shifting, I think this is where the term premium comes in and starts to say, hey, you know, what, is, what do tariffs mean? What do tax cuts mean? You know, what does immigration reform mean? What does this all mean for inflation and growth? And that, uh, you know, that that's what it's still, I think, trying to figure out. But you need more risk premium out there to to make it attractive. And that's a good point that just historically uh, it beckons for a more term premium to get somewhere normal. Thanks a lot, Kathy. Uh, good chat.